Good morning, Becky. How are you? Good morning, Becky. Yeah. 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 Good morning, Becky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Down, yeah. Up. Ooh, I don't know if I can do that. <laughs> 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 yeah. Right. Did you tell her that? Okay. Well, she might be able to. Well, she she I have no idea. She said she's cute. And I go, oh, okay. I still don't know if you're done. I have no idea. I didn't talk to her. Yeah, yeah. But it's good. It's good. as we sing hymn number 26. This is the day. <coughs> Let's stand as we sing hymn number 26. This is the day. <coughs> this is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. No rain. No rain. No rain. No rain. No sunshine. All right. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Happy Sunday. I was just saying it's my nap day. I'm so excited. Um, women's Bible study. The ladies meet regularly on Tuesdays at one o'clock. Um, this Tuesday will be the. The lesson titled, A Godly Woman is Kind, number 13. The study will be in the adult Sunday school room. Um, it says the heater's working great. There's lots of tea and hot chocolate to help with the colder weather. Yay. Men's Fellowship and Prayer, Wednesday at 6.30 a.m., also in the adult Sunday school room. Same heater with coffee for the men to start the day. <coughs> Plus, it's um, important to get together to pray about the events that are going on in the world and in our community today. Wednesday night study, Wednesdays at 7 p.m., regularly in the sanctuary. We just started a new study based on David Jeremiah in Philippines. In the Philippines. <laughs> in Philippians, counted all joy. The study's been great with lots of discussion. World, with our world events, having joy is definitely something we all need. Harvest Fest celebration. I have a whole, it's a whole page today. 
Um, this is a Harvest Festival se celebration scheduled for this Saturday, November 4th at 6 p.m. at Cammie's. Um, this will be potluck style. There's a sign-up sheet in the entryway. Uh, Thanksgiving potluck. It's all about food. Thanksgiving potluck in two weeks on Sunday, November 12th. There will be a Thanksgiving church potluck here at the church just after the service. Um, again, the sign-up sheet is now on the table next to the Harvest Fest Celebration sign-up. Um, pregnancy Center fundraising event. Um, this announcement and the next one are new and they aren't in your bulletin, so um, they came in at the last minute. The Columbia Pregnancy Center is having a fall dessert fundraising banquet on November 11th at 6 p.m. Um, this is an event to learn more about the Pregnancy Center's outreach events. It involves a silent auction. And if you'd like to be involved in hosting or sponsoring a table for the church, please see Pastor Greg as the center needs an RSVP. Um, to sponsor a table, it's $100, um, to which all can contribute to it for the donation of the table. And to host a table is free. Appreciation Night. Also, regarding the Pregnancy Center, they are holding a Grateful For You Appreciation Night for everyone in the community as a thank you for all of your support for the center. Um, this event is on November 17th at 6 p.m. and will be held at 305 West 3rd Street in Rainier. Um, fall back. Don't forget that this Saturday, before you go to bed, remember to turn your clocks back an hour. Um, it's that time of year when we're, um, daylight savings will end. And I believe that Dan has a brief announcement as well, and then I will finish up. Thanks. Well, from that series of announcements, you can pick up that part of what it's about here is the food. <laughs> and the astute the among you probably have noticed that there are odors of food in the kitchen area coming this way. The reason for that is that every year in October is Pastor Appreciation Month. And there was some discussion with the congregation. The consensus was that what they wanted to do was something from a bunch of people rather than just something as a congregation in both ways. So after church today, we have a kind of potluck brunch as a way of thanking Vicki and Greg for what they do for us all year. I suspect there may be a card or two involved with that also. <laughs> but anyway, thank you today for what you do every day. We appreciate it. Yes. Thank you. To get me crying before <laughs> <laughs> Thank well, you, everybody. And I don't have to cook. I get up, I get and I don't have to cook. Yay. Yeah. Happy yeah. Sunday to me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that, you guys. Um, media devices, please mute or turn off any cell phones or other tablets and such so that we can fully engage in worship and learning without interruption and thank you very much for doing that <coughs> for our prayer Heavenly Father we just come to you today with thanksgiving and gratefulness in our hearts and Lord I just pray that you prepare us for the worship you have to come and the word that's to be delivered today Lord and I just thank you for this group of people that um, come together each Sunday to glorify you in Jesus name we pray Amen Amen, Amen. 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 Well, we'll start with uh, our worship time. For everybody to stand, we'll start with uh, hymn number 770. I think it's
Four seventy five. <laughs> with us and allow us to as we strive to follow and walk in your spirit Lord and become hopefully more Christ like it's a journey and we thank you and praise you Lord that you help us through all that to achieve your will we ask Lord that you these tithes and uh, morning tithes and offerings Lord would uh, well be used in your in your kingdom and we uh, hope they'll be honoring to you. We just thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So I just want to say something. Um, as Dan indicated, this is the week that we're celebrating our appreciation for both writing and Vicki. And so um, my prayer for you two all the time is that you will see God's sovereign hand work. We, we all know that God's timing is not our timing. And he moves much slower than us. And so frequently, we don't pause long enough to be able to see his hand at work. I just want, I pray that you see God's hand at work in this church, and that's why we selected this song to sing.
Well, when I started the uh, presentation software this week, I never <laughs> knew that this was going to be a surprise and how everything was connected. I really appreciate you and Gordon and Geneva for doing that beautiful music that touched my heart. And when I found out this morning that you guys were doing something, I almost took that out. Um, but I go, you know, it, everything that I planned, for um, the Holy Spirit was involved with it. And, and, and what I'm talking about today is the church. And um, and just so that he reigns in the song you sang, and I have another song at the end that I'll put up there, and I promise not to keep you too long from the food. <laughs> I was so happy when I saw food being brought in. I'm going, they're doing a comic? Well, this is what Nazarenes do. I didn't realize this surprise. I, I can't continue without doing one thing first, though. I had, uh, when Grace walked in through the door, um, I was talking to her about that Burl Ives song, Silver and Gold. So today it has to be David and Grace. Yes. Yes. How many years of your 63 years married today. Wow. What an amazing wow. time. You're both such an inspiration to me, and, and especially with watching how you guys stay together. I know it's beneficial to me and Vicki, so yeah. I appreciate you guys very much. And so... Anyway, uh, what kind of brought the sermon about is um, it was basically from uh, my class this week. One of my assignments this week was called The Nature and Mission of the Church. Um, and what I, I had to do a paper on that topic. And what I really appreciate about it is that it answered a lot of questions for me. Because even though you can be deep into school and, and in studies, sometimes simple terms get by you or you don't even discuss them a lot. And so I had to really ask the question, well, what is the church other than what we have been doing and, and, and stuff today? And the research and the comments that I discovered went beyond the simple explanation of Christ being the head of the body and the body, of course, being us, the church. And, and that is essentially it, and that is the truth. What really intrigued me is all the attributes that make up the church especially the spiritual side of things. And there were also terms that are not commonly discussed. And I've, like I said, I've heard these terms and I've been trying to figure out where they come from or what they really mean. So we'll go through some scripture today. Um, and I'll not specifically stay in a particular verse, but for reference, the scriptures will be on the screen. We'll kind of rush over it. Um, the first verse I want to bring up is Colossians uh, 1, verses 15 through 18. All creation. For by him all things were created, both in the heavens and the, on the earth, visible and invisible. Whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is also head of the body, the church, and he is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he himself will come to have first place in everything. Now, this verse mostly describes who Jesus is in the context of the church, the head of the body of the church, as described through the verses. And when we look through the Old and New Testament, um, we can see that there was no way for man to actually see God or they would die, especially in the Old Testament when you go through these different scriptures. Um, there's a commentator named George Turner from the Wesleyan Bible Commentary, and he said that the nearest thing to a vision of God is reported in Ezekiel, in which Ezekiel saw a brilliance in the cloud, which was the glory of God, but not God himself. And Paul, who wrote that, uh, the, or Paul's statement here is parallel to John 1.18, Paul writing Colossians meeting, where it says that the only Son is the bosom of the Father, has made God known. In other words, says John, when we see Jesus, we see the Father. Now, verse 18 of Colossians 1 shows that the body is the body. And in the context of verse 18 regarding the word church, the Greek, Greek, Greek word, you know, I'm still getting used to these things. I swear. The Greek word is called um, ecclesia, 
which is in relation to other Greek words, and it basically means a calling out, um, specifically like a meeting, but it also refers to the people who are called out as being a community, or members on earth, or saints in heaven, or both. It's also meaning the assembly, or the church. And it was really important, though, to establish first that Jesus was the head of the church, because with Jesus, we can have relationship with God with no separation between us and God. In order for a body to live, it has to be connected to the brain. Otherwise, it might die. And that's a really important thing to know because the head is what is mentioned in the Colossians verse as being the life force of, of the whole body. That same commentator that I was mentioning before, he says that one of the most impressive analogies that Paul employs for the relationship between Christ and the church is that between the head and the torso. Every portion of the human body is directly connected with the brain by means of nerves. In a simple manner, in the true church of the living God, the relationship between individual members is a deriv derivative of the relationship of these members to Christ. And the body as a whole includes Christ and the believers of Christ. And like I mentioned before, without part of the body be connected altogether, then there is a disconnect from the head, the brain of the body, resulting in spiritual death. If the people then are the body of the church, what is the role of the church? Um, another book that I had to read is called Grace, Faith, and Holiness. I got two books. One is really easy reading. I love that thing. The other one is like a typical college textbook with every big word you can think of. I need another book to decipher the words that are in this book. But it's really good. Um, this guy is um, of the Wesleyan faith, and um, he speaks about the body of Christ, and he suggests this. It seems clear that it, the body, refers to the fact that the risen Christ gathers his disciples to himself in such a way that they are called by him to continue in history the work of his incarnate life. They are his body for his work in the world. Now, when we look at the Bible for direction, we see many aspects of that work that God wants us to do. And the first thing we need to realize is being part of the body requires us to surrender our lives to him. That's where the work of God begins in us, so then we can do the work for him. It is God who transforms us more into the image of his Son, and so we can become more Christ-like. And being transformed then allows us to display and act out the attributes that Jesus himself had displayed. Um, Jesus said in John 14, 12, Truly, truly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these he will do, because I go to the Father. Another commentator that I had uh, read, his name is William H. Hall, he explains that if the disciples would truly believe in Jesus and not just give assent to his claims, then they also would do the works which he did. In fact, because his going to the Father by death and resurrection was to usher in an era of fulfillment, at that time the disciples would be able to do even greater works um, than, that, than these. Since works were intended to produce faith, this promise was abundant, abundantly fulfilled by the early Christian mission to the Gentiles that resulted in far more believers than Jesus ever won when he was on the earth. And this same charge is given to us through the Great Commission to be Christ-like disciples as Jesus had commanded us to do in Matthew 28. In fact, all of the works that God wants us to do are wrapped up in the Great Commission. Ephesians 2.10 reads, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand so that they would walk in them. And I apologize if I stutter when I say good works and celebrate recovery. Every time those words are said, we go, good works. And it goes like that. So I got that in my mind. It's like habit. I almost want to do it every time I come to that. But good works also derive from love and humility. They include keep, uh, keeping God's holy commandments and being Christ-like, an example to those around you, as stated in Romans 7, 12. And from the book of Matthew, they also include helping the poor, giving to someone in need, or an alms giving, or something done in secret, giving somebody a cup of cold water, as even mentioned in Matthew 10. Basically, it means in any way you can be a servant to somebody. 
can sum up some good works. And one of the main things that the Christian church primarily hangs its hat on, theology-wise, is the Nicene Creed. In about 325 AD, there was a council, and uh, again, if this is some stuff you might have heard, it might be just review, but for me, there was some stuff that I learned through all this. But anyway, there was a council, and it was sort of like a church board would be for a church, or the governing body of a denomination. And this was the very first ever, ever council of the Christian church. And it was held in the city of Nicaea. That's why it's called the Nicaea Creed. It's now um, Eisnick, Turkey. That's where Nicaea used to be. And the council was uh, convened by the then Romer, Roman Emperor Constantine. And it was intended to address, to address the entire body of Christian believers. And it was also responsible for the 66 books that we now have as the Bible today. And it's also um, over a thousand years that all these books have been written, but what they did basically is compiled them all together. And later was also formalized and approved in another council called Hippo, uh, both in, or that was in uh, Africa, I believe. Yeah. And so, uh, Anyway, so the, the council was also convened for a controversy um, over Arianism. It was a doctrine that held that Christ was not divine, but was a created being. So they needed to have this council to kind of address some of these issues. So the Nicene Creed is the defining statement of belief of Nicene, Nicene or mainstream Christianity. And in those Christian denominations that adhere to it, the creed defined four specific aspects of what the Christian church is. These are, um, one of the aspects is called one, another one is holy, another one is Catholic, and another one is apostolic. A common term that these four aspects is called is the marks of the church. And what this means is the descriptions of the marks of the church are features that constitute the true church of Jesus. The term one is used to mark what the body represents that we talked about before. Since there are many members that make up one body, there's only one head, who is Jesus. This also represents that God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit are also united as one Lord of all. There is no separation of them. And so therefore the original purpose of the church is also to be one as the Father is one. Regarding the term holy, 1 Peter 1, 15 through 16 says this, But like the Holy One who called you, be holy yourselves in all your behavior, because it is written, You shall be holy, for I am holy. The de declaration that God originally spoke through Moses uh, in Leviticus, You shall be holy, for I am holy, was not to a single individual. It was to the entire people of Israel that they should be holy. Therefore, as the church, it is also to be maintained as holy, set apart and only for God. Regarding the mark of the church as being Catholic, it does not mean to a particular denomination. And this is one of the things I really got out of the class because when I hear the term Catholic, I immediately go to the denominational aspect. However, the denomination of Catholic, I can not say Catholicism, <laughs> The denomination of Catholic, it does adhere to some fundamental sacraments, um, and I'll mention those in a couple minutes here, but an author of one of my textbooks, Don Thorson, he offers that the term of Mark of Catholic means that it reflects the universal nature of the church. That is, the church is not restricted in any way due to race, gender, language, culture, or nationality. Galatians 3.28 reads, There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free man, there is neither... ...the person... ...is like disciples of the nations. And as we read throughout the book of Acts, we see where the apostles had formed the early church as well as the teachings that they had based on the instructions from Jesus. 
This is the mark of apostolic, and it means to follow and believe in the earliest teachings of the apostles during the creation of the Christian church. When the Holy Spirit got of the apostle as it was passed down from Jesus. Now part of the functions that make up the church is the, the, the things that the church practices in. And these are rituals regarded as an importing divine grace and they're usually called sacraments. For example, in Matthew 26 we read of how Jesus took food and wine to represent his, food, his uh, blood and represent his body. And he told the disciples to also participate it and do it in remembrance of him. In the Church of the Nazarene, Manuel reads this uh, regarding communion. We believe that the communion supper institute The Lord's supper, supper is a means of grace in which Christ is present by the Spirit. All are invited to participate by faith in Christ and be renewed in life, uh, salvation, and in unity as the church. And another uh, practice that the church practices then is baptism. In Peter's first sermon in Acts chapter 2, Peter declared in verse 38, Repent, and each, of, each one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Following this commandment, churches are to observe this practice. As is commonly said, baptism is an outward expression of an inward choice and desire to serve and dedicate oneself to, to Jesus. Now, included in the definition of baptism in the Church of the Nazarene Manual, it says this, it is to be to administrator to, administrated to believers, indicating their full purpose of obedience in holiness and righteousness. And it's also something that doesn't have to be totally dunked under water, although that's what people usually uh, like to have. But you can also be sprinkled, or you can be just a little bit of water put on you. It's basically your outward expression of faith. And there's also means of grace that are practiced within a church as well. Um, Don Thorson adds that uh, general or informal means of grace benefit everybody on a daily basis. Sometimes known as spiritual exercises or disciplines, they include practices that enhance spiritual formation. These include devotionals, Bible studies, group discussions, prayer time, and God. It is also to fulfill the call and the command of the Great Commission, which is placed on every believer of the church to make Christ-like disciples in every way, shape, and form. In Romans uh, 12, 6 through 7, Paul wrote this Since we have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, each of us is to exercise them accordingly. If prophecy, according to the proportion of his faith, if service in his serving, or he who teaches in his teaching, or he who exhorts in his exhortation, he who gives with liberality, he who leads with diligence. He who shows mercy with cheerfulness. These gifts that Paul is lining out show how the church acts in ministry. And the potential of ministry is endless and includes teachings and missions and pastoring and worship, arts and evangelism, church government, and many other ways of service. Prayer is even one of those ways of service. Um, one of the things that I've been convicted of Afraid to let that come through because I think people kind of get scared if I go, ah, but that's not what I mean. <laughs> but it's just, you know, speak from the heart and stuff like this. It's been a little harder to prepare for me. But as I was preparing for this, this, like I said, I was taking this mainly from one of my papers that I was writing, and then I got to thinking of all the things that have come across my view or my reading over the last probably month or two and uh, it's how the church is acting and it's such a blessing to be in this church to see how you guys react 
to our community and to the needs that are going around. Because there are a lot of churches that don't get it, and we do. I mean, the, I, I've seen so many churches fail, not just in our own denomination, but just within our state alone, just because of COVID. They just didn't know or didn't react. I shouldn't say they didn't know, but they just didn't react. They didn't try. And this church has remained thriving because of the fact of your um, dedication to it. I was watching this video of a, a rock, popular rock band that was, and it's some church down south, and I forget where it was at. But the church was out there protesting various things. And they literally had signs that said, God hates, and I'm not going to say the word, but it had to do with, with people uh, that decide to have relations with the same sex. God doesn't hate and, and if he wants us to show love. If he was going to do anything to anybody, it would be because they decide not to believe him and they came to their end days and they're gone. Jesus wants us to show love and it's so sad to me when I see churches who will take that stance or they'll take one, one uh, view of a political party and then bash the other. I'm not saying one is right or one's wrong. I'm not saying I'm right or wrong. But the thing is, is when you see people bash on each other, it's not showing brotherly or Christian love. If you look at the example of Jesus, he was had to argue with the Pharisees and a ton of people all the time. But you never see them actually go and bash one another, except in times where he had to. Like you brood of vipers. Yeah. You know, I wouldn't want to have been in front of him then. But there's a different aspect. If you, you see how he loved people. If you think about the, uh, the prostitute who was about to be stoned, he, he just stood right by her side while nobody else could throw a stone because he convicted him in such a way through love. If you think about the lady that touched his robe that just all of a sudden got healed because of her faith. And all the people that, that, that he touched and that's what he wants us to show through the church. Um, just a little bit of things. I mean, if you look out at that board right now, I see five thank you cards from the community. Um, there are some from the pregnancy center, of course, but you know, just the little things that we've been involved in, they're so grateful. The, the meals that the ladies and some of us do for the, uh, the, the community, and just, just little things. You know, people come to this door all the time. People call all the time. And that's also having to skirt in between all of the spam calls. I, I, I kid you not, sometimes I come in the office after just not being in a day, there's about 15 missed calls on there. And some of them are commuting members and needing needs. And uh, I want to say thank yeah. you. Um, thank you to this community church for uh, all my family members who are touched by the work you all are doing through ratting our jail system. It touches my mm -hmm. personal family. Yeah, that's, it's amazing to hear about some of the awesome things that are happening through that ministry that Brad's involved with. And, and it's just, that's what the church is about. Um, you know, I had a bunch of things that I thought of saying, and I think this message said it a lot, and our, our, our uh, song said it a lot. There was something that John Wesley once said in one of his sermons, and he said this, The true members of the Church of Christ endeavor with all possible diligence, with all care and pains, with unwearied patience, and all will be little enough to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace, to preserve invalid the same spirit of lowliness and meekness, of long-suffering, mutual forbearance and love, and these cemented and knit together by that sacred tie, the peace of God filling the heart. Thus only can we be and continue to be living members of the church, which is the body of Christ. If I could sit there and write like John Wesley, I wouldn't have to go to school. Poetry. But anyway, I want to thank you guys again for, for the surprise. And uh, I have one more song I'm going to be playing for you. Uh, but again, I was just so touched that the Holy Spirit worked through this whole message with the songs. Um, I didn't want to take away from your guys' song that it was like, gosh, the way it was just flowing like that was perfect. Um, I do want to say a prayer before the song comes up here. 
Lord Jesus, I want to praise you and thank you for such a wonderful church and a wonderful congregation. Um, I pray that you continue to help us and support us and guide us in the way we need to go. And I ask for blessings on each individual for what we have been doing. I pray that this community um, is touched by you through us. There is so much that goes around in our little sphere of this church that it's just amazing. And I'm so blessed to be part of this. I hope that every single person knows that they're blessed too. I pray for those who couldn't make it today or those that have to work so much that they can't make it in here. I pray that um, there's a peace that they can know by coming in here and being connected with the church. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Um, one thing I forgot to mention, I'm very touched at the fact that you guys have heard me talk about my daughter before who was getting me plugged into possibly working at Avamir. Now remember, this is a person who considers themselves to be non-binary, who felt that the people over here at Avamir needed somebody to speak to them. And to the fact that she would not give up bothering me to get permission to do that and bothering them to call me. And so I, I, it's, it's a praise that God will use anybody for anything to make his will happen. In a couple of weeks, I get to start doing regular Sundays over there, giving those people a message. They've been hungry for it. And I'm thinking, if they're hungry for it, I wonder what our community thinks. They, I think they're hungry and they just don't know it yet. So anyway, this song is called, it's a new song to you guys, but it's been out for a couple of years. It's called The House of the Lord, where we can give him praise.
Yeah, that's what we're talking about on Wednesday nights, joy. But there's joy everywhere, especially in the house of the Lord. Um, I'm going to say a prayer because I want to do this before I get distracted and not bless the meal. And you guys wait on me for that. Um, I also kind of have a prayer for the end of the, the service and the benediction. So I'll say it all at once. Uh, Lord God, I, I praise you and I thank you for the food we're about to eat. I ask a blessing on each individual who prepared food and, and the thoughts and uh, the prayers that me and Vicki receive. And uh, I pray that uh, the food gives us nourishment and gives us strength throughout the day. And let us go forth into the world in peace and dedicated to your service, O Lord. Let us hold fast to that which is good, render to no person evil for evil, strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, Help the needy and the afflicted, and honor all people. Let us love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of this Holy Spirit. And may God's blessing be upon us and remain with us always. Amen. 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 You're dismissed to go and eat. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to make a suggestion that we go through the kitchen, get our plate of food, and then go into the Sunday school rooms to sit down so that it will last us have the flow go a little bit nicer through the kitchen area.